as the dust settles after double or nothing. What do we already know about Forbidden Door 3? And guess what, guys? I've got a new favorite wrestler. Guess who? And after Samoa Joe whispers something in Hook's ear, is Samoa Joe Hook's new daddy? All that and more on Grapple Sauce. Hit it, Chad. Hey there, Daver here. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, this guy's Chad. And Chandler's back as well. How we doing, Dave? Yeah, we're doing pretty freaking good. Um, really great Fallout video of Dynamite. Uh, Chad, you uh, told me it felt kind of like a uh, Raw After Mania a little bit, huh? It had that vibe, like, not as extreme, but, like, it was unpredictable. It was fun. It was loose. I enjoyed it. Um, probably one of my most favorite Dynamites in recent memory. I thought it had a really good opener, but that's just, you know, easy for me because I love Swerve and uh, had a really fun and interesting match. I've never seen a match kind of like that Casino Gauntlet because it's a gauntlet, but completely random. Anyone can come out at any time and, you know, all this forbidden door. So you got two guys from CMLL, two guys in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I, I quite liked it. Uh, the middle was a little bit weak, in my opinion. Uh, I do enjoy talking segments, but the talking segments weren't that great, I guess, but... It was, a, it was a good dynamite overall. Yeah, for sure. I thought the EVPs brought the noise, but other than that, I, it was definitely uh, didn't hold my attention too well with the little middle chunk. But um, I don't know. They're they're trying. They're, they're throwing stuff against the wall and see what sticks. Like, at least it's not just match, 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 match. Now they're trying to make some stories and get some emotional investment. So uh, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh, yeah, I definitely appreciate that. You know, you don't want to just, like, that's what Collision's for, right? Collision's the match, 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 dynamite. You want to have some story set up, especially right after a big pay-per-view like Double or Nothing. Yeah, for sure. Well, how'd you feel, Dave? Uh, well, I mean, the thing I find a little funny is the critique forever. AEW doesn't have any stories, no storylines, and now... I'm hearing all over the place. They've got too many stories. Like, what are they? You, you can't win. So uh, I like the added stakes and the story driven, you know, matches. I think it works. That's half of pro wrestling. It's a soap opera with stunts, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really digging it. Like we've got a lot of uh new territory that they're exploring after the pay-per-view. Uh we've got a heel Statlander, we got Hook and Samoa Joe doing something. Uh, a lot of things, you know, changing, uh evolving. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um there was some uh people kind of saying that a lot of things changed last minute on Dynamite. Yeah, um, I hear that Tony Khan guy is uh, booking by the seat of his pants, which uh, to reiterate what we've all been saying, hire a booker, Tony. Just right? share the load. I'm not saying you have to quit or step down. Just share the load. Yeah, yeah. You can come up with a big picture and then just like, okay, you work on that story. You work on that story. I want to be at this point by this pay-per-view. Yeah. Maybe Tony's like, I want to take the elite stuff. And then I want you, woman I hired, to do the women's division. Start booking the women's division. You, take care of the TV TNT title. How we get to that? Like, I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. Although, to to be fair, my um, one of my pet peeves, I think they actually did a good job, which, which was the impromptu match. Usually for me, it doesn't work, brother. But uh, I actually quite enjoyed it in this episode. I thought it was kind of good. Oh, the Sky Blue Monet yeah. one? Yeah, the, the booking of it, because Sky Blue revealed that she was the one behind the uh, attack on Monet like a month or so ago. So it made sense. Yeah. yeah. They uh, followed through on a story, a little bit of payoff. So, yeah, can't beat that. Um, Tony Khan has actually publicly said that he is making re-signing Brian Danielson a top priority. 
I right. say, hey, man, do you want to be the booker? <laughs> Will you right? stay if you're the booker? Yeah. Like, there you go. Problem is, solved. Is Brian Danielson on the fence about re-signing? Because I thought he loved it. hasn't been. I haven't heard anything about that. Mm, okay. but, it's it's just you know, Tony. Well, that makes sense because Tony Khan would be an idiot to not re-sign him at this point. He's one of his biggest stars, and wouldn't that be nice to market Daniel or Brian Danielson's retirement match in your promotion? Yeah. It's either yours and, or uh, it's either happening at All In or WrestleMania. What do you rather have, Tony Khan? <laughs> I think he'd rather have All In. Not to mention, Tony Khan has said. Basically, quote, if I'm hit by a bus, I would pick Brian Danielson to run everything. Mm-hmm. So I Even think Even though that... he got his neck broken and he didn't have Brian Danielson run everything. It was him <laughs> from Jacksonville. So I see a flaw in that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, going back to uh, Soraya being pretty upset about getting her match against Mariah May bumped. Uh, Looks like on social media, she posted and deleted um, about to start really speaking my mind. Uh, And some have speculated that the post is related to her match being cut on Dynamite. So uh, uh, looks like she also liked a tweet during the show from a fan expressing annoyance that her match with May was cut. Um, so yeah, uh, it could be, Hey, it could be a storyline. It could be real. Who knows? (laughs) Could be like the, uh, the Matt Hardy stuff where he was getting real upset that he wasn't able to be in a higher position on the company. And Tony Khan might just be in the belief that like, eh, due to your, like, I would just be honest with like, due to your injuries and your medical record, I don't really want to push you or put you in high profile matches because I don't want to break you in the ring. Yeah. Like not to sound harsh, but like I don't want a liability on my hands. But in that case, if you signed them, like if you have that feeling, why would you sign them in the first place, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, another thing I wanted to kind of touch on uh, in the WWE realm, uh, Becky Lynch set to have a extensive hiatus. Uh, and let's see, uh, we got a report here from Uncle Dave Meltzer, uh, says Becky Lynch is taking an extended leave. Uh, from what I was told, it's not like a short period of time. She was looking for a long period of time out. If Seth Rollins is not on the road, it makes sense for her not to be on the road. They can't be hurting for money or anything where they need it right now. Maybe she's looking at other things, or maybe she's not. But she'll be a free agent in a couple of days from now on June 1st. So she will not be signed to WWE in a little over a day. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy because she her entire career has basically been in WWE, so it's hard to imagine her without it, but we we all kind of thought this with the Sasha Banks, so it's kind of the same thing with her. Now she's Mercedes Monet, she was in New Japan, now she's in AEW, so who knows, maybe in six months to a year or so, we'll see. Rebecca Quinn is all elite right here. We confirmed it first. Calling it now. <laughs> I'm going to clip that. No, I think she was... Uh, I think she's a WWE lifer, uh, if I'm being honest with um, you. Yeah, I don't know. She's still a pretty new mom. Like, I'm sure she probably wants to have some family time. Like, that's that's a pretty demanding life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, apparently, they do have, like, their own little tour bus. Uh, yeah. that Their whole family tours in, which is pretty cool to have, I would imagine. Um, But, yeah. Uh, do you got anything, Chandler, in the... Uh, pro wrestling news yeah we had a real big nxt let's go so we had the musician sexy red up here i don't really know much about her but i hear that was a big thing uh ethan page turned up in nxt so i think that's where he's gonna land which is pretty exciting and then jordan grace is gonna challenge roxanne perez at the next nxt ple pay-per-view whatever you want to call it so that's pretty exciting yeah, that yeah. forbidden door in WWE is still open. Just a crack, but it's yeah. open. 
Yeah, no, that was a that was a shocker. Like I was, uh, I heard all all kinds of stuff, so I had to go through and watch it. It was a really good episode. Um, if they if they keep up that momentum, I actually might start watching NXT again, which would be kind of crazy. One of the uh, yeah. one of the main wrestling podcasts I watch, in fact, the only wrestling podcast I watch other than Grapple Sauce, uh, their favorite show is NXT, or at least oh, was nice. for a bit. So maybe they're cooking something. Uh, did you hear uh, Jordan Graves, what she's uh, calling the uh, TNA WWE collaboration? No. Uh, 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 band. It's the band open door. I don't know. What is it? The prohibited portal. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I got to gotta give it to her. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's about damn time WWE really jumps on that and starts doing some uh, reaching out to other companies. Do you think we'll ever, ever get a WWE AEW super show? Uh, when Tony Khan dies, yeah. <laughs> and like Brian Daniel, if, if Brian Danielson is in charge and... CM Punk is in charge. Like, if CM Punk runs WWE, which is not that far fetched, and then of like all the current wrestlers that are around, right? If CM Punk behaves and sticks his head, his nose down, and like does what he says, I think he could someday. And Brian Danielson takes over for AEW, maybe. Well, that's about it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It'd be it'd be one hell of a show, I bet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I really want it. We should do a uh, episode where we fantasy book that. That would be fun. <laughs> yeah, it would. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get into AEW Dynamite, shall we? Yes, sir. Um, yeah. <laughs> in uh, beautiful Los Angeles, uh, LA Kia Forum. Uh, they start out the show with Mercedes Monet and her championship celebration. Uh, they got balloons. We got the crowd chanting CEO unprompted <laughs> without the help of the theme song. <laughs> so um, they're clearly after the end of this, I'm convinced that they're trying to turn her back into a baby face. Mm-hmm. Uh that's what they want. That's what they wanted from the get-go. Um, she says, I didn't, or didn't I tell you I was worth the wait? Yes, I'm I'm gonna agree with that. She was worth I, I I forgot about all her shitty promos, all the time wasted. I watched her wrestle twice, and I am all in on Mercedes. Good lord. Uh, I even felt like her promo here wasn't awful either. Um, let's see. She says, uh, and money changes everything. We get more CEO chants. Uh, she says, Willow and I brought the house down. Totally did. Uh, she says, uh, Willow's way too nice. And uh, she could tell Statlander and Stokely were going to turn on Willow. Um, at this point, Sky Blue appears on the big screen and reveals she's the one who attacked Mercedes uh, back like a month ago during her interview. That was still kind of up in the air, big mystery. Uh, then Sky Blue appears behind Mercedes and takes her out. Uh, she holds up the TBS title and walks off. Um, cool. Yeah, I think that uh, that was a pretty cool segment. Uh, what do you all think? It was fun. Um, I was happy they didn't just drop that weird attack angle, and like at least we got some resolution. Um, uh, and credit to Sky Blue, I thought she brought it. Like her promo slash acting skills are better than they were, and uh, the match they had later on was pretty darn good, especially the last minute. It took some building to get into it, but that like last minute, minute and a half was pretty fantastic. Uh, so yeah, props to her. She's been working for, working for that bump up the card, and I think she's earning it. Uh, yeah, I thought Sky Blue was pretty good. I thought the promo was so so. One thing that I thought was interesting was uh, 
Monet said Willow has had the run of her career. It was a one month title reign. I hope that's not the run of her career. Mm -hmm. I hope there's bigger things for Willow in the future. I hope that's not it. So, other than that little nitpick, because I always find one thing to nitpick, I thought it was a fine promo. Nothing, nothing too exciting. Yeah, I mean, it was just a thing to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> you yeah. know? <laughs> uh, cool. After that, we get the Elite. Uh, Young Bucks, Okada pulling up in an SUV. Then we got Jack Perry rolling up in the uh, scapegoat mobile. Uh, they all get out of their vehicles and walk into the arena. Speaking of that, uh, they're uh, they're keeping kayfabe real hard with that. There's I've seen video of Jack Perry himself driving that van in between venues. Heck yeah! I don't know if it was just from the double or nothing Las Vegas to the Kia Forum, but he at least did it for that. So you know what? I, I I'm giving praise to Jack Perry for that. That's pretty good kayfabe. Nice. Cool. As yeah. good as the Lex Express. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Um, after that, we get a HBO House of the Dragon Who's House match uh, to promote the new season, or season two of House of the Dragon. Uh, comes out on June 16th, my birthday. Uh, should be fun, fun. Um, yeah, really love that show. I watched all of Game of Thrones. I'm really... I've never read any of the books, uh, but I really enjoy the shows. <laughs> I heard they um, deviated from the books because they were like, ah, we're not going to keep the show running until he's done with the books and he's yeah. taking forever. So we're just going to cut it off. Yeah, yeah well, that's fair. I mean, I think I read the first book when I was 16 years old. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I am 44 now. <laughs> wow. I, didn't, I didn't know they were around for that long. Yeah, I, thought it, I so, thought it was like a 20, like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's Damn. a thing. <laughs> uh, at least they're doing, like, prequel shows to where they don't really have to move forward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much, so that's smart. Um, but yeah, we got Swerve Strickland versus Kill Switch. Uh, kind of wrapping up that little Christian Cage uh patriarchy feud i guess he wrestled everyone else nick wayne and christian cage only one uh, guy he hasn't left. wrestled mother wayne yet Ooh, nah she she would <laughs> she would go over yeah she'd take the title never mind don't don't wrestle mother wayne please yeah don't do it um yeah swerve has a uh stick and move approach in the beginning to avoid kill switch's power uh swerve gives kill switch a backbreaker on the floor kill switch punishes swerve on the outside swerve counters a vertical suplex from kill switch into one of his own uh kill switch choke slam swerve covers for two kill switch tries to decapitate swerve with a chair uh but prince nana grabs it uh, at the last second kill switch gets swerve uh or takes a swerve stomp on the floor. Uh, swerve gets another choke slam from Kill Switch uh, and a standing moon salt from Kill Switch for a two count. Uh, yeah, I really missed that move. He used to do that all the time back in the yeah. day. I've never seen him do it. Must must be since he's been healed, he doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Swerve gives Kill Switch a German suplex, then a house call, then a Swerve stomp, but damn, Kill Switch kicks out. Uh, then Swerve gives him another house call for the win. Um, after the match, uh, Swerve cuts a, a piece of <laughs> not really Kill Switch's hair because it was attached to the. <laughs> the yeah. band of the mask close enough, uh, but, close enough. But yeah a little bit of a trophy a little payback from uh them ripping a dread out of his hair so yeah i think they got that feud wrapped up in a nice little bow and uh time to move on yeah uh i like the finish uh you know you get that 2.99 and then they just try something else he was just like ah, i'm just gonna hit you with my finisher again it was great mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I loved this match. I thought it was really good. I thought it made Swerve look good. I liked how early on Kill Switch tried to hit Swerve with a big vertical suplex, but then Swerve immediately reversed it and hit one of his own. I thought that was a great spot. 
I love the whole bit of, you know, Killswitch getting the chair, not on taking it from him, and then Swerve stomping him off the apron. I loved that. And then definitely that ending. I just loved how quick it was. It showed, like, Swerve is a smart champion. He just was like, oh, that well, that didn't work. I'm surprised, but I'll just hit him again. Like, I, I, got, I ain't got time to waste. So, really good match. Uh, really good opening match for me. Yeah, no, it's um, it's good. I feel like Swerve's kind of getting momentum. Like, I feel like he lost it a bit right after he got the title. And um, hopefully, hopefully moving forward, uh, they they build him, and uh, hopefully he doesn't drop it at Forbidden Door. We'll probably yeah, talk about hope. that soon. But I hope not. I really hope not. Um, <laughs> uh, cool. Then we got. <laughs> Tony Schiavone announces that Tony Khan has an announcement <laughs> that will get Mercedes Monet defending the TBS title against Sky Blue uh, as a little impromptu match later on in the night. Uh, yeah, that match, uh, I guess, was the woman's match that had to replace Soraya and Mariah May. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, still want to know what happened with that, but I'm sure we might find out. We might not. Well, it's next um, week on Dynamite, so we'll, we'll see it. It didn't get bombed. It got bombed, but it didn't get, like, deleted, you know? Delete. Yeah. Delete. Delete. <laughs> uh, cool. After that, we get a John Moxley promo. Uh, says it's a dumb idea to have an elim- Eliminator match while being hurt. Uh, he's a champion. He's not pissing his day away at Disney World or Disneyland. Uh, he names off all of uh, his New Japan matches coming up. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was an okay Moxley promo. It wasn't his best, but yeah. Yeah, I think he's kind of a little overexposed now. He's just, To me, he feels like just another dude. Uh Couple yeah. of years ago, he was a friggin' superhero, and now it's just oh, same Moxley promo, same Moxley match. It doesn't have the fire it used to. Yeah, I think I, what I could guess. I wasn't watching AEW at the time, but when he first came around, which I mean, that was right when AEW was starting. He was one of, if not the biggest star in the company, right? Uh, second only to maybe the Elite, right? But he was one of their top guys, and now. With Adam Copeland and Osprey and Joe and Okada and Monet, he's kind of getting washed out just a little bit. So, I mean, even MGF is kind of like overcasting him. So, I, I think he's just not changing his gimmick, not doing anything to like revamp who he is. Yeah. And that's kind of uh, making him a bit dull, but he's still over with the crowd. Uh, I was kind of getting a little annoyed because I was like, why wasn't that match at Double or Nothing just a straight-up IWGP title match? I would have been fine if it was a loss, right? Like, why wasn't it just a straight-up match? Yeah, yeah, you're losing anyways. Yeah, why didn't they, like, why not? Yeah, yeah. Would have given it a lot more uh, drama, for sure. Oh, yeah, and I and again, I would have been like, oh, well, yeah, they're not going to put the belt on Takeshita. Like, that makes sense. They would probably want an IW or a New Japan guy to beat him. Like, I'm I'm fine with that. That's about it. Um, I think I know what's wrong with Moxley lately. What? He hasn't bled in a while. Oh, mm-hmm. he must be sick. He's not feeling well. He's not bleeding. That's all it is. Um, even uh, Jeff Cobb uh, was kind of getting on social media talking about how stupid the uh, kind of paraphrasing here, but he said uh what was it like you have to uh, win a gauntlet match to get an AEW title shot, but any dork can just challenge for the IWGP and get a, <laughs> get a shot. It's like, mm, yeah, yeah, not wrong, buddy. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, new Japan books, the belt, like, it's really not AEW's place. It's weird that they're even defending or not defending it, but having it on AEW, I don't know. Yeah. It, it doesn't it, it doesn't work for me, brother. 
<laughs> Once again, I don't like eliminator matches because you know, like especially after that Takeshita yeah, yeah. one, you know who's gonna win. So what's the point? Why not just have a straight up match? Not even a title match, just a match. Yeah. yeah. Don't even get the belt out of it. Yeah. Um. All right. Then we get a segment that should have never been on the show. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Not really digging it. It really really lowered my my love for Jericho that I was gaining <laughs> the last couple weeks. To be fair, there uh, was like three decent things with this whole promo. I want to hear you talk about it, but I liked, I didn't like the segment. I liked like three things. I <laughs> gotcha. Uh, they're calling it TV time with the learning tree. Uh, totally playing into the Jericho Clout vampire TV time has to be on TV. Uh, I mean, I kind of like that. Uh, they got turf in the ring, a, uh, a tree, a podium. Uh, Big Bill introduces Jericho. Uh, Big Bill makes a, a leaf analogy about uh, leaves fall in the autumn and grow back in the spring, stronger and brighter. <laughs> Uh, Jericho, uh, teases giving fan a fan a uh, t-shirt, but he doesn't. Uh, he he calls all the his fans branches. <laughs> uh, he says Hook and Shibata dropped him on his head during their match. Uh, Jericho, the bounty hunter Brian Keith. Uh, Brian Keith says Jericho isn't getting the respect he deserves and can't believe more people didn't jump at the opportunity to join the learning tree. Uh, Jericho calls Keith a uh, uh, like a bad man or something and Bill's like, oh, no, no, no. He was a bad apple. Get it, tree? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh then Hook uh, comes out. He looks pretty mad. He takes out the security. Then Samoa Joe's music hits. Joe appears kind of out of nowhere in front of Hook and whispers something in Hook's ear. And they leave together. Uh, that was the coolest part of the whole thing for me. Now I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. This is what I wanted. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hook and Joe. Nice little... Uh, partnership i'm i'm there for it yeah so i liked a couple things from this first off i liked big bill i thought he was hamming up a lot and whenever jericho said anything he'd be like uh-huh yeah yeah uh-huh so it was just kind of fun watching him uh i liked how when jericho first started he went who wants more tv time you know i do and you just hear Taz go, that's a shoot, brother. <laughs> and so it was It was Taz. I thought Taz was really funny. And then I like how the crowd was yelling, shut the F up. And Jericho went, come on, this is a family show. I always like it when they make little clips like that. So that was a funny line. And then the Joe Hook tease, that was pretty good. But we didn't really get any, like, conclusive idea from that. We just know they're going to be working together sometime soon. But, uh, yeah, um... Not a great segment, but that's kind of typical Jericho segments to me. How'd you feel about it, Chad? Uh, much the same. Like, I was trying to like it, if that makes sense, because I was just like, I see where they're going with it, and I like the idea behind it, but they're all just kind of annoying the hell out of me. Um, I mean, I suppose if it ends up uh, in Jericho just straight up getting his ass beat by two badasses... Uh, I'll be happy, but I just kind of, I have this sinking feeling that he's just going to win and keep going with this. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, I heard this from someone else, so I don't take credit for it, but it's like, we get it, you're self-aware now. We get it, you're taking up TV time because you want it, right? Do something good with it. You're just kind of like, you're still annoying us. You're still not really entertaining us, which is the point of TV, so... Like we get it, it's bad. So what? Do something with it. Yeah, yeah. What about Brian Keith, he can cut a promo, huh? That oh, yeah. was the most redeeming part. Actually, it was like because we've never really heard him talk, and it was like, oh, hey, he's got some chops. 
Yeah, Brian Keith yeah. was pretty good. Big Bell was fun to watch. And er- everything else but Jericho was fun. The crowd was fun. The commentary was fun. Hook and Joe were awesome. But like, yeah, Hook and Joe are always cool. Yeah, the AEW commentary is pretty decent. Oh, no, what, what crazy. So I don't really know what to say other than, uh, God, I know he, I know he did what we wanted. I know he revamped or redid it or whatever, but I'm still not buying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, after that, uh, we get an amazing video package showcasing Stephanie Vecure. Uh, she's a CML women's champion and the New Japan Strong women's champion. She looks like a badass. Uh, did you see anything cool, Chad, when you were uh, digging digging into her her oh work? Oh my gosh, she is so fucking violent. I love it. I I hands down new favorite women's wrestler. Uh, <laughs> I was really into this. I stayed up way too late after the show going on YouTube, searching her. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. She looks legit. Uh, watch, Go watch stuff. I am so hyped for Forbidden Door now. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, the great job nailing her. I've never heard of her until I saw that. I'm like, oh, who is she? She looks like a star. And then I was like, oh, oh, she, she brings it in the ring. Uh Go down that rabbit hole on YouTube. I swear to God, you will not be disappointed. Were you able to uh, decipher some of her signature moves and or her finisher in any of that footage? It was kind of a fever dream to me because it was really late when I was watching it. And I'll probably go back down. Uh, like I said, now I want to like actually learn about her rather than just clicking on random clips on YouTube. So uh, I'll get back to yeah. you on that. Cool. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty hyped too. Uh she looks like a million bucks. Uh, obviously, uh she shows up a little later, but uh yeah, man, I'm really hyped for it. They did a great job with that video package. And I mean, in all reality, all their video packages have been top notch for the past, I don't know, two months at least. So yeah, uh, Sky Blue versus uh, Stephanie Vakur should be pretty good at Forbidden Door. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> being cheeky, I'm being cheeky. I think the match will be good at Forbidden Door that we're going to get. I just want to make a little silly joke. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, cool, yeah. After that, we get a stupid IWGP Eliminator match. John Moxley versus Rocky Romero. Uh, never once did I question who was going to win this. I mean, Moxley's beating people with one arm now. So, and, and you still not, you're still not even like, ooh, is he going to win? Yeah. <laughs> but Dave, if Rocky be, Romero pins John Moxley, he gets a shot at the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. To be which fair, when was the last time Rocky Romero won on AEW champ, uh, television? Probably or programming. Probably Maybe. Rampage. I don't know, ever. Maybe a tag match? May 2021, Dark Elevation. Oh, <laughs> Chad looked this up. I did. I got who really... Who do you beat? <laughs> um, oh, uh, we're Horseman, the big dude. What's his name? Uh, J.D. Drake. J.D. Yes. Drake. Yes. Wow. <laughs> it's been three years since this man won, but he could have beat John Moxley. If, if yeah. Kadoske Takeshita couldn't, maybe Rocky Romero could. <laughs> oh, what a joke. Oh, Moxley's arm is still wrapped up and hurt. Uh, Romero shoulder checks Moxley, uh, toe pays him before the bell. Romero targets Moxley's shoulder. Moxley fires back with chops and a head bite. Uh, Moxley hits a cutter on Romero out of nowhere. Moxley reverses a uh, Juji Katami into a bulldog choke. Uh, Moxley escapes another Juji Katami and Moxley lariats Romero. Uh, then a death rider for the win. Yeah, pretty uh, ABCD, you know. Uh, very, very Moxley. He, he, he doesn't even need the other arm, he might as well just have it amputated. Yeah. Well, then how's he going to hold his water bottle? That's that's a good question, Dave. You didn't think of that. But yeah, so with the so other I, hand. 
<laughs> so I only uh, I only liked the match at Double or Nothing because Takeshi was my favorite wrestler in AEW, and I like Takeshi's move set. I like his moves. I like see he could wrestle a broom, and I'd still find it entertaining. No offense to John Moxley, I just one armed John Moxley isn't that ripping, right? No pun intended. So uh, that's what I liked about that match, and this was kind of like the same match, but not without without my favorite wrestler in AEW. So it was just kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, Moxley's gonna win. Oh well, yeah. I don't think I wrote down uh, anything about this match. I, my notes are Samoa Joe hook tease about the end of the learning tree segment. And my next one is I like the idea of Joe and Hook together. So I had nothing to say about that match. <laughs> uh, Moxley beating Takeshita really deflated me. And Moxley's promo earlier in the night really deflated me even more. And then this match did nothing for me, man. Like, like you said, Moxley used to be a superhero. Now he's, I don't know, he's just wrestling. Dude, he's there. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, there. It's, it's maybe it's time for him to finally get that fishing trip he he wanted. Yeah, take a vacation. Like, remember when we thought he was taking a vacation? We we're like, oh, good for him. He's finally. And it was like, oh, Moxley wins the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, and you're like, never mind. Yeah. I mean, that's good for him, but never mind. Yeah, yeah, he needs a freaking vacation for sure. Oh, and then we got John Moxley's wife, Renee Paquette, uh, with Hook and Samoa Joe backstage. Uh, I really like this. Joe says, we do not exist on their time. No, truly dangerous men exist on our own time. And then they walk away together. Love that. Uh, yeah, Joe's taking Hook under his wing. Uh, that can't be can't be uh, can't be bad. So I'm really intrigued by it. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what they do. Are they just gonna wage war on the learning tree, or are they gonna go higher up on the card? I would hope they just kind of forget the learning tree and go higher up. But I doubt that's gonna happen. Right. Yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe Big Bill and uh, Brian Keith will get some shine too. Like. That could be a cool tag match. Just have Jericho step into the background and just uh, set up that tag feud. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. I'd watch that. I'd like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, make Jericho a freaking manager. That's what I really want. Um, yeah. Commentary, maybe. Uh, yeah. I don't know. He's got to know. He's got to retire within the next year. Like, People are people are over him. Like, yeah, he's he's got to do something drastic. Just get Lance Storm out there, let them have their last match, and wrap yeah. it all up in a nice bow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um. All right. After that, we get Don Callis uh, going to the ring to present a contract for a spot in the Don Callis family. I'll sign it. Uh, he... Me, me, me. Get me closer <laughs> to Takeshita. Your, your winning win record is probably better than the person he actually did sign. That is true. All in all is better than whatever Trent's got going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I just love how Don Callis gets booed, booed out of the building. You can't even hear anything hardly when, he, when he's in the ring. It's so good. He's got so much heat. Every uh, is gonna have a Dominic Mysterio, and I'm glad AEW's got one, and it's definitely Don Callis. It's not anyone else. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, nobody so boos. Kiss by Liv Morgan. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> awkward. I like how we had the awkward. opposite reaction. I was intrigued. <laughs> they was disgusted. <laughs> oh man. Uh, he says, when he sees Orange Cassidy, he sees himself. Uh, Orange Cassidy comes to the ring. Uh, Don Callis calls OC a star and hands him uh, the contract. Orange Cassidy grabs it and slowly, slowly rips it up. Uh, Orange Cassidy says, hey, Don, no. <laughs> 
Uh, Don says, no one says no to me. Uh, then Stokely Hathaway and Statlander walk out to the uh, stage. And Stokely says he doesn't like Orange Cassidy, and he reminds him of Willow Nightingale. Uh, Statlander says some stuff. Uh, and then Trent Beretta shows up and attacks Orange Cassidy from behind, um, makes him bleed. Trent gets up and hugs Don Callis. You got to give the people what they want. <laughs> uh, Trent is now in the Don Callis family. Uh, Don kicks Orange Cassidy and he <laughs> hurts his foot, <laughs> mm -hmm. kicking him. Uh, then Trent kind of kicks Orange Cassidy a little bit. And uh, yeah, they both walk off together. So, yeah. I'm surprised the Don Callis family's still going, if I'm being honest <laughs> with you. Like, considering how quickly they've kind of pulled the plug on the Devil Dumpling Gang, uh, like, and I'm not saying this is, like, the wrestler's fault. It's kind of the booking. Because you got Powerhouse Hobbs, you got yeah. Takeshita, you got Fletcher, you know, obviously they Osprey now. They need to be now. more dominant. Yeah, they need to win, but, like, all the Don Callis family does is lose. And it's people that probably shouldn't, except for Osprey, of course, but people that shouldn't be losing. Like, Hobbs shouldn't be losing as much as he does. Takeshita shouldn't be losing as much as he does, and yet they do. So, like, why would you, A, why would you want to sign for this family? Other than Osprey, nobody wins. And B, why would you want to sign Trent? He doesn't win. Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, it seems lose lose. Like it's baffling because, like on paper, this should be a dominant faction. They're all really good personalities. They're great actors, uh, great wrestlers. Uh, like I love them as a faction. But let's get some heat. Like I feel like they kind of did that with um, the Bang Bang Gang. Like the Bang Bang Gang feels more credible than they did three months ago. Like before yeah. the Continental Classic. If they can do that, heat them up a little. Hell yeah. But for right now, it's just like, oh, why? What's the point? I hate to say it. Maybe we got to wait until the Continental Classic. They'll drop, like, Takeshita in it. And then right? it'll be like, oh, yeah, these guys are great. Yeah. Please put him in that. Oh, my God. Oh, I would. I want that. him in the Owen tournament. Yeah. Well, did you hear they finally oh. made it? Uh, and I, I've just heard that people complain about this in the past. You might tell me I'm wrong, but... They finally made the winners of the Owen Hart get a world championship yeah. match at All In. They announced it That's tonight. Perfect. It's That's perfect. Cool. So, That's cool. Well, shit. Consequences. So I gotta, love it. Osprey's got to win it. That's my theory. Stop is, winning Osprey. I'm sick well, of that, you. Yeah, that's my theory is he loses Forbidden Door, and then that's his path back. Yep. yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's mine, too. Um, but, yeah, to, to get in the Don Callis family, I feel like being mean outweighs your win loss record like you just gotta be mean yeah <laughs> that's really all that matters just gotta hate baby faces which okay okay brother poor babies oh, i hate babies uh, snitsky um, was right exactly did you hear he punted a baby again nice it was like snitsky's last match and someone brought in a fake baby and he punted it again so he uh, he's still going. going he's not. It. He retired, but he's still going. Yeah. Uh, cool, cool. Uh, cool. Then they announce uh, Will Osprey defending uh the international title against Kyle O'Reilly on Collision. That'd um, be a good match. Be That'd a, be a really good match. That'd be a great, great match. Uh, can't wait to watch that. After that, we get a uh, Daniel Garcia promo. Uh, he calls out Will Ospreay for the international title, uh, not the TNT. Damn it! I think I think the TNT is perfect for him. Tony Khan just uh, hates me. Tony Khan just hates me. He wants all my favorites to lose. Takeshita, Garcia, Swerve is gonna lose before I know it. He just hates me. Uh, yeah, Garcia made some kind of analogy about getting muddy and walking on some carpet or something i didn't really follow it but uh <laughs> uh yeah he seemed you know pretty fired up and 
I want good things to happen for Garcia. Hey, remember when Tony Khan said we'd see a lot more of Daniel Garcia in 2024? That was January, and then he lost at Revolution, and we haven't seen much of him since. Yeah, we saw him tonight for like 30 seconds. And he joined the FDR in a random-ass uh, triple threat match, or a, a six-man tag match against the Elite, like, I don't know, a month ago. So, hey, Tony Khan's right. Hey, the year's only halfway over. I want more. I want more. <laughs> There's a whole nother half a year left. Uh, uh, cool. After that, we get the uh, TBS title match. Mercedes Monet defending against Sky Blue. Uh, kind of liked that this is Mercedes Monet's uh, very first match on TBS. Kind of cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's uh, apparent they're trying to turn her baby face. Uh, Monet arm drags and drop kicks Sky Blue, covers for one. Monet hits a really nice Meteora on Sky Blue from the apron to the floor. Uh, yeah, I like what you said before, Chad. She, no one can do a Meteora like her, but man, so good. Uh, Sky Blue hits a draping neck breaker on Monet for a two count. Then Sky Blue kicks out of a backstabber from Monet. Sky Blue gives Mercedes a full Nelson slam for a two count. Uh, Monet counters a code blue into the moneymaker for the win. Uh, yeah, really great match. Um, I said it earlier. Uh, Monet was worth the wait for me. I, I don't even care about all her shitty promos and waiting forever and is she healed blah 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 like all i had to do was see her wrestle and this is only twice now i've seen her wrestle and i am totally ceo ceo right? <laughs> i have one small thing i would like to say about her i'd almost like to see her kind of like gunther which is she has multiple ways to finish the match because like i love the money maker but I think it only works specifically as a counter. Like, it didn't look as good against Willow, but it, it looked great when she was countering uh, countering the Sky Blue with it. Like, so to me, I was like, she needs more than one way to finish a match, and that should just be one of them. It's kind of convoluted yeah. to get someone into that. Uh, I'm not saying it should be as used as much as the RKO, but something like the RKO, where it's like only an opportune moment, moment could Monet hit it in knock her opponent out, but I really loved that final segment of her countering the code blue into the moneymaker. It was really, really nice ending move. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we got Monet uh, holding up the belt uh, after winning the match, and then we got Stephanie Vacour interrupting and holds up her NJPW Strong Women's title. Wait, they uh, mentioned yeah, a woman yeah. randomly for the first time, and then she shows up on that same episode? No way. Tony Khan, you sly dog. Yeah. The old <laughs> NXT top of the ramp stare down. Mm -hmm. Try but mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Love it, man. That. Yeah. So I guess uh, that will probably be a Forbidden Door match. And now we have two well we'll find out later this is the first match that we uh know we're gonna get uh yeah i'm all for it man i'm i'm gonna research her too chad and and see what she's got so yeah you know what i sorry to go off topic you know what i bet for that swerve osprey match not to spoil anyone i bet they're gonna make it like a triple threat or a fatal four-way i bet they're gonna sprinkle in some other people Ooh. so that's you got hey man yeah. Hechicero and Shota Umino, maybe just like two random two people that yeah, were on the call. And they were pretty good. Door. Yeah, like I think hmm. they, they should have some <laughs> forbidden door people in there, you know. And then, oh, Osprey yeah. can say, Oh, I wasn't pinned. Can I have the match at all in, bruv? Even though, and then he can win all in heart. Like, I, I think I'd like that. I think that's how you book out of this. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Like I said. If if Osprey just wins clean 
at Forbidden Door, I to me it feels like Tony Khan is more of a fan and not a booker. Like he's just like, oh, I got this cool toy and this cool toy. Ah, and like he has got like no long term plan. He's just playing with his toys. But if he builds a cool story about it, then I'm hooked. But if it's uh, if it's just him being reactionary and uh, Osprey's the best, he's getting all the belts, then I'm uh, I'm not feeling it. Is Chad saying that CM Punk was right? Is that what I'm hearing? Where's the lie? <laughs> Someone man, give me a sometimes, no. <laughs> sometimes I don't get it, man. Like when you hear Tony Khan in interviews, he just sounds so thoughtful and intelligent. And like, he seems like he knows what he's doing. Like, but then like, in practice, it just nothing. Well, nothing hey, time will sense. tell. Like they have to have the matches and tell the story. Like I said, this could be the verge of like an amazing thing. Like turn this into a big long story where maybe even not this all in, but next all in. Like maybe he has to defend his the own darn title he just won, and uh, and maybe that's maybe it's like a Cody esque uh, WrestleMania thirty nine to forty type of run. That'd be pretty amazing. We'll see. Ah, That'd be okay, pretty good. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Um, cool. Yeah. After that, we got uh Willow and Stokely backstage. Or not Willow, Statlander and Stokely backstage. Uh Stokely says all this started with the uh fatal four way for the number one contender match for the TBS championship. Uh Statlander said how much she wanted to win it, but Willow won it. Uh, Statlander says uh, she finally does something for herself and she gets booze. She's tired of cleaning up everyone's messes and saving people. Now the women's division is going to need protection from her. Dude, this was an amazing Statlander promo. Like, knowing what she's done before, like, yeah, really good, convincing. I like heel Statlander. I love it. Yeah, same, same. She's she's got that aura. I think she's kind of been missing. Like for a while, it's like, wow, I love watching her in the ring, but she always kind of feels bland when she's just chewing the scenery as part of the uh, things. I'm like, oh no, she's got my attention now, and uh, I can hardly wait to see her wreck some fools. Who who you got? Who's who's gonna be her first victim? Ooh, they're gonna start small with like Red Velvet. Uh, Ooh, good pull, good pull. Maybe a rent. A renegade sister, Queen Amanada, maybe we haven't seen her in a while. Yeah, on Dynamite. Or, Ooh, uh, yeah. Lady Frost. Let's a ring of honor. Yeah, mm-hmm. Lady Frost. Yeah, I like Lady Frost too. Damn it. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's some good, good guesses. Um, but yeah, I'm all for the uh, heel Statlander. Can't wait to see what she does. Um, cool. After that, we get a little recap of MJF's return. Uh, they lay out. First off, I really liked the uh, the unknown voice of the uh, narrator for the video package. Someone completely new that usually they have like Excalibur do it or something like that. But yeah, I really liked the uh, female voice, and she lists off all his accomplishments and records. And there's a shit ton of them. I didn't I didn't write them all down after the, he's the youngest AEW champion and. Uh, the only man to hold the AW Championship and the Ring of Honor Tag Championships and yeah. all longest kinds of match. other stuff. Yeah, yeah, longest match, uh, inductee to the uh, like the some kind of the Jewish uh, yeah Jewish Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's really cool. Like MJF is actually like doing pretty good at such yeah. a young age. He's <laughs> prolific. Ooh, that's a yeah. big word. Yeah, Ooh. wow, good one. <laughs> um, but yeah, really, really liked it. Uh, I'm still uh, coming down off that return from MJF. It really, really made that pay per view for me. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. I really liked the video package, and uh, yeah, they did a good job. Um, let's see. After that, we get an elite segment. Uh, Let's see. We got uh, Jack Perry and the Young Bucks in the ring. Uh, Okada 
uh, from what I understand, people were chanting CM Punk when he said, yeah. hey, 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 shut up, bitches. <laughs> That's funny. It was awesome. That freaking got me. Uh, Jack Perry says the elite uh, run this shit. Uh, Tony Khan assembled his best team and they pulled out all the stops. They even set me on fire. Not only did we win Anarchy in the Arena, but I pinned Brian Danielson. Uh, Nicholas says, uh, or he puts over their Reebok pumps and presents a gift to Okada. It's a brand new Lamborghini. Uh, the crowd chants, you deserve it. Uh, he uh, pretends to cry and then Moves his hands. And he... faces. <laughs> it was awesome. It was... Yeah. Oh. Okada is so funny. I saw this meme about him today where it was like, born to do comedy, forced to do uh, 40 minute wrestling matches. So I, <laughs> I, I love Okada's comedy where he's just like, oh, thank you. I I can't believe. I can't believe it. Thank you. And he's like choking up on his own words, but it's so funny. I love Okada. He's so funny. Well, I'm still going back to the him giving them the thumbtack rebox. Here, try these. Oh <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> sing it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude, so good. Uh, Matthew says Copeland was badly injured during the TNT title match. Uh, he said it was his fault because he told him to break a leg. <laughs> Ooh. Oops. Uh, Oops. <laughs> too soon. Uh, he says Copeland is now stripped of the TNT title. And the ne network says they need a new champion. And they've got just the guy. Uh, Christopher Daniels interrupts and says Tony Khan made him the interim EVP. And he says Jack Perry has to earn the TNT title. There will now be a tournament to decide the uh, contenders for the TNT title, and they will compete at Forbidden Door in a ladder match. Cool. I'm all for that. Um, so I'm wanting uh, Scorpio Sky to come back. Ooh. Really mm -hmm. bad. Have you even seen him wrestle at all? No. Nope, like, he hasn't even once. been... Damn, because he came back like the third collision ever. And mm -hmm. then he had one match, and I think he got hurt again after being out for Ugh. like a year. And uh, yeah, no one knows where he is. So, so two things, yeah. Dave. One of them you got wrong. That wasn't Christopher Daniels. That was Adam Pierce. <laughs> I, uh, I saw someone been like, oh, yeah, this... Christopher Daniels as the EVP in his suit and tie. It's just Adam Pierce. He looks so much like Adam Pierce. So I thought that was funny. And then the second thing, they've already announced the first match for the qualifier for this ladder match. Anybody see it? I did not. No. Well, I like to see what the match was. It's uh, Takeshita versus Penta on Rampage. Oh, what yeah. the yeah. fudge? Yes. Okay. Dude, could Takeshita win this belt? No, no, don't get, don't, don't get, don't get wacky. He'll, That's he'll make it past the first round, though. If somebody's there to eat a pin, it's Panta. Well, I'm he sure. He thinks so. I'm sure it's going to be like, oh, you win one match, you're in the ladder match. And it's like six people, right? Like, it's not going to be a huge tournament, right? Or is it going to be like, like how, like, how big is this tournament going to be? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll be like an eliminator. A couple of, oh man, we got dueling Ooh, dogs here. A couple co-hosts. I don't have a dog. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, have? No, I don't know. Uh, I'd hope it'd just be a straight up one-on-one -on -one ladder match. I think that'd be more fun. That'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. yeah I had to get Nova a haircut. Oh, and she's so chilly, I have to put a dog shirt on her. Aw. <laughs> uh yeah fun stuff uh but yeah i'm looking forward to that ladder match uh, oh yeah let's see they uh swarm christopher daniels but the acclaimed come out to back him up uh are they gonna get the acclaimed back in the tag title scene 
kind of hope so. Um, Where they were cool? Yeah. Uh, I love Billy Gunn, but I think we're getting pretty close to Billy Gunn's retirement. And if Billy Gunn just kind of moves into a like a manager role for the acclaimed, and you know he might throw a fame master every once in a while, I think that'd be a pretty good role for him. Yeah, I know neither of you watched the pre-show for Double or Nothing, but man, after that match, Billy Gunn looked spent, like he was mm-hmm. hurt or like blown up and couldn't like he like could barely even like lift up to like scissor and like. <laughs> it was it was bad. Like I was worried for him. I thought he was legitimately like maybe having a heart attack or something. Really? But yeah. Interesting. He looked he looked like really bad. Uh so yeah, maybe it might be uh getting closer for him to uh to do that. Uh yeah, but that that would work for me, be a manager. Uh I'm sure a lot of people would love him to go back to the WWE. But I'd rather him stick with the acclaimed. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's plenty of things he could do. Yeah, I'm sure he br- probably brings a lot backstage too, because I'm sure that's probably where most of his role is, is probably helping bring up younger talent, one would assume. Uh, well, he's yeah, got to stay with he... his ass boys. True. Yeah. I think he's a uh, trainer too, possibly uh, behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, cool, cool. Um, after that, we get a swerve promo. Uh, he says uh, he gave Kill Switch the kill shot, and he's curious to uh, see who the challenger is for his title at Forbidden Door. Um, he was uh, kind of looking over his shoulder. He was like, yeah, there's a lot of, lot of good talent going to be in this gauntlet match. A lot of people with titles, without uh so yeah that's pretty cool uh he said he'll be watching (laughs) uh then out of nowhere we get a roosh promo and that mother effort calls out mjf dude is that gonna be mjf's first match gotta be right that's that's a uh exciting return match to have hey mjf welcome back you got roosh (laughs) thanks for (laughs) re-signing He, just like you know, uh, ow, ow, <laughs> it still hurts. That's like uh, that's you know? like that's like Tamatonga's first match in WWE, where it was the uh, the like street fight with Orton and Owens and Solo, and they were doing like all these dumb moves and throwing them from the top rope onto a bunch of chairs, which is pretty stiff for a WWE. I'm sure that's stiff anywhere, and so it was basically like. Welcome to WWE. Enjoy taking all these awful shots. <laughs> you know, Roosh is gonna hit him on every barricade on the outside. <laughs> what if what if MJF hits Roosh on every barricade? Just flip the script. That would be funny. Ooh, that would be okay. funny. MJF, okay. you can steal that. You can steal that. I know you watch this. Or what? What if what if Roosh just goes like he did to? Uh... To our good buddy uh, Cody Chung from uh, Prestige, just yeah, dude. done in a, like a minute, just Aww. wreck him. Welcome yeah, back, MJ. Yeah, you're getting squashed out in a minute. And my favorite part of this promo: if you mess with the bull, you get the horns. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not horns, horns. Uh, good shit. Yeah, rush. Please push him at some capacity. Uh, yeah, I like Roosh a lot. He uh, he didn't have to sign with AEW. Like his brother, uh, Dragon Lee, took the uh, WWE route. So yeah, he uh, yeah, they better do something with him. I think um, uh, I think Roosh doesn't really want to change up his style. If I if I had to guess for the man. He doesn't want to change up his style, which is definitely stiffer than the average WWE match. True. Like man. the only guy who gets to be stiff is Gunther. And that's because if they don't let Gunther do it, he'll just go to AEW and be a huge star over there. So I, I think that's why Roosh wants to stay. If if Roosh went to WWE, he'd be one of Rey Mysterio's friends. And that's never a good spot to be one of Rey Mysterio's friends because it doesn't ever end well for you. Yeah. Be another Carlos. Mm-hmm. Is is uh, Carlito in the Judgment Day? Uh, I don't think so. 
I think Carlito's a bad guy and the Judgment Day are a bad guy, so they're just kind of working together sometimes, and they both hate Rey Mysterio, so I think that's about as deep as it goes. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw a random WWE clip of uh, uh, Damian Priest telling him, like, you're not in the Judgment Day, but we like what you did or something, so... Yeah. Um. Cool. All right, we're at our main event. The Dynamite Gauntlet match to decide uh, who faces the AEW World Champion, Swerve, at Forbidden Door. Um, Yeah, this match was incredible. Uh, It's sudden death. uh, So anyone can pin or submit anyone at any time. No DQ. 21 men. uh, Pure mayhem. Uh, Starting off the match, we got Jay White. And then Pack, which is kind of a cool uh, starting point. They both hate each other from uh, their double or nothing match and that feud. Uh, really liked how they did that. Um, and I wrote down here, please have a countdown this time. Yeah. They had a countdown. <laughs> you got to get the crowd engaged in that. You have mm-hmm. to. That, that made it 10 times better than it would have been. Uh, we got Pac just brutalizing Jay White, chokes him with his own jacket, slams White into the barricades on the outside. Pac dives on Jay White onto the floor. Uh, we got the third man coming in. It's Mystico. He uh, cross bodies Pac and White on the outside from the top turnbuckle. We get the fourth man in. It is Will fucking Osprey. Totally surprising. Bruv. Bruv. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay White and Osprey look at each other. They look real happy. They slap hands because you know they got a long history in New Japan. Uh, then Osprey uh, uh, chops him down <laughs> as they slap hands. Uh, the fifth man comes out. It's uh, uh, Umino. Uh, Shoto Umino. Shooter. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, he was uh, John Moxley's young boy, which we talked about. Uh, dude, this dude looks freaking great. Uh, him and Osprey exchange an epic back and forth with uh, dodges and counters, and like they just looked like ninjas, like inhuman. Like, couldn't even believe it. Looked incredible. Uh, the sixth man, brother is Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, Claudio basically uppercuts everybody. He uh, tries to pin uh, Amino. Uh, Jay White breaks the cover. Claudio gets White in the giant swing. Then Mystico. Then Will Ospreay. Then Amino. Then Pac. (laughs) Everybody. Uh, That happened during Picture in Picture. I I couldn't take my eyes off this match during any of the picture and pictures um seventh man totally out of left field never thought i would have seen this leo freaking rush oh my god dude chad that match he had against Jaden at prestige oh. woo! but he was uh uh the black a different hearts. persona the black heart leo rush he was pretty much uh the boogeyman <laughs> basically mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, man, this dude is off the chain. Uh, Leo Rush faces off with Claudio. He does some like superhuman dodges and flips and things that a human being shouldn't be able to do. Uh, we get the eighth man coming out. Orange Cassidy bandaged, bandaged up from getting his ass beat earlier yeah. by Trent. And uh, black t-shirt and came out to the Pixies again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm liking the new uh uh enraged orange Cassidy. Blood orange is what I, what I like. Uh he gets a uh uh or he gives Claudio a stun dog millionaire and then a spinning DDT. Uh Osprey and Orange Cassidy face off. Uh Jay White interrupts. Uh, the ninth man comes out. Hechicero. Been waiting a long time to see that fool. Mm-hmm. Uh, he takes out. He takes out Jay White. 
uh, Osprey and Orange Cassidy. Uh, Orange Cassidy hits Amino with a Orange Punch. Uh, Juice Robinson shows up out of nowhere and pushes Pac off the top rope, just like he did at Double or Nothing. Uh, yeah, we're getting Pac versus Juice Robinson, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pac will kill the poor man, but it'll be fun to watch. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can't wait for that. Uh, Jay White is about to hit Orange Cassidy with a Blade Runner, but Will Ospreay hits Jay White with the Hidden Blade while in the Blade Runner position. Whew. Um, he goes for a Stormbreaker on Orange Cassidy, but Orange Cassidy counters into a pinning predicament, gets a two count. Osprey counters the Orange Punch into an Os Cutter, for the win, we've got Will Ospreay facing Swerve at Forbidden Door for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Woo! Man. Uh, I There was like 15% of me that was like, oh, too soon. But me and Chad, I feel are on the same wavelength. Uh, Ospreay ain't getting this belt at Forbidden Door. I hope not. I, I'm of two minds. Like, part of me, a the match is going to be amazing. That's just yes. going to be. I'll agree with that. Hundred yeah. percent. It'll be a fantastic match. Uh, if this is the beginning of a bigger story, hell yeah, I'm in. Uh, if this is just lull, uh, Cena wins. Uh, then I'll, I'd be pretty disappointed. Uh, because like in my opinion, like Forbidden Door, like maybe. Should have maybe have been Hitchisero, like that would have been an amazing match. Mm -hmm. Uh, like you know, make it a forbidden door match because now you got two AEW guys, but I don't know. Like I said, time will tell. Yeah, I'm like just you... oh, what are you saying, Dave? Oh, I'd like to look back. I'm pretty sure all the AEW world championship matches at every forbidden door have never been from another promotion. I think the Last year, AEW it was MJF and Tanahashi. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Uh, Mox is, yeah, was interim at the time, and he was against... Naito? Was it okay. Naito? Or was oh. it... No, it wasn't the Rainmaker. Or at least there's a high-profile match at every Forbidden yeah, Door. Yeah, there usually where is. Where you would think it should be from another company, but yeah. it's not. Oh, I guess is kind of 2022 is also Tanahashi. Oh, okay. Fox. The president of New Japan. Yeah. Anyway, I, my issue is, is I wish he didn't win the international title because it's just kind of muddies that, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I, I don't know what I want them to do with this. I'm not saying it's bad. I would say it's a little too soon. But, of course, like always, they can change it. They can change my mind. I thought the Bucks were an awful opponent for Sting's last match. And I was so wrong on that. It was a fantastic final match. I, I There's so many ways they can change this. There's so many ways they can make this better. So I'll, I'll let them play it out. Uh, and, yeah, it'll be an excellent match no matter the finish. So Yeah, yeah. I just... That. I just hope they give us, like I said, emotional investment because, like, the match is going to be amazing. But you know what? To make it better, get my heart into it too. Like, yeah. make me want to jump up from the couch, laugh, scream, cry. Uh, you know that, like that. That's what I want. Like the, we all know AEW. Almost everybody in there can have an elite match because that's why they're there. Ooh, he said the word. And the best wrestle. Uh huh. But. Um, but honestly, like over the last year or so, what like what's really been um, captivating me about WWE is the characters and the stories. Like if you if you can start folding that in, and they're trying, they're trying, then uh, hell yeah, you got me. I see this as an opportunity to. Okay, so we got two faces, right? Swerve and Osprey. This is an opportunity to really hone in and amplify that stone cold son of a bitch anti-hero that swerve can be yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm waiting for um i don't want either one of these guys to turn full heel uh for this storyline yeah. i if if anything swerve wins clean or someone interferes to cost osprey the match that's yeah, yeah, the way Callis I wanted to go down. Turn because maybe he doesn't want to use the tiger driver. 
Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I do notice in in your in your like to further your argument, you notice Nana comes out now. He doesn't do the dance. He's just got his coffee and he looks more serious and stone faced now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Give me the dance or give me death, AEW. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, um I, I think it'll be a good match and I'll 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 let it play out. I think my other issue is like, man, I just wish there was like wouldn't it be neat to see Swerve and Hetrocero? Wouldn't it yeah, be yeah. neat to see Swerve and that Umino guy? It's forbidden door, that's the point of it. So if we're just gonna do an AEW match, bye. Bye. I, I'm sure it'll be a good match no matter what. Yeah, I'm I'm really really into it, and it's going to be in uh, Long Island, New York, Ooh. too. That's MJF's hometown. That's Willow Nightingale's hometown. Mm-hmm. So she, she's winning that belt back. <laughs> no, she's fi- uh, Monet's finding Vakur. Oh um, yeah, damn it. What's maybe, Tony maybe Storm all, gonna do? All in. I bet you Tony yeah. Storm's gonna fight that Stardom girl that's friends with Mariah oh, yeah. May. And that's going to start that Mariah May turn. But I would know there was no women's world champion on this show. Because you can only have one woman's story on this show at a time. Right, Tony Khan? You know what? You know what would make the Bucks like take their gimmick to the next level? If they went, you know what? Let's start booking more women on the show. Because they're like, we like, and they try to pull it off as like a heel thing. That would be like, hilarious. There's no women on this show. Let's start booking them more. And like, there's just two women matches at like every show now. That would be funny. <laughs> Holy but, shit, Chandler. Holy shit. But it's a yeah. You're onto something. That does it? That's for that's some reason. Dope. Like like it's a like it's a heel thing. And Tony Khan's like, we're gonna get back to old AEW guys, and it's back to one women's matches show. <laughs> that would be such funny banter, and it would be awful, but it would be so funny. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh yeah, Swerve did walk to the ring and stare down Osprey after the match too. So uh yeah, I'm all for it, man. It's going to be a freaking banger. Um I like that we're already building to a pay-per-view. This is yeah. great. We're building to a pay-per-view on the Fallout show of a pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. I love it. This yeah, is how you advance these storylines, man. Yeah, no, they were. They're already like you know. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure Cal's family uh, and uh, OC are probably going to somehow factor in. Uh, yeah, no, this they're they're on a roll. I think I think they're really uh, um, evolving. Ooh, yeah, uh, it's literally wonder... one month away. When's the last time yeah. we had two matches booked one month away? Yeah, yeah. Uh, deep down, I just want Orange Cassidy to, uh, I've mentioned this before, go back to his uh, fire ant gimmick. Uh, you guys need to look that up. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Uh, yeah, Hobbs is hurt, right? He's got a torn whatever oh. ACL or whatever. Is that yeah, why so he's not cool. around? I didn't yep. know that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And that Moxley match. Oh, really? Okay, that's unfortunate. Saw a video of he uh, posted a video of him rehabbing on like this machine. <laughs> he had the surgery. Now he's uh, rehabbing. So well, I hope he gets well soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, Jericho didn't do it for me. They should have just cut that and put Soraya and. <laughs> Uh, Mariah May on it, but Ooh, this is AEW. Have to win match on a dynamite, Dave. The world would collapse. Yeah, it was bad enough. We got a Statlander promo Ugh. and a women's match. <laughs> so much screen time. They're going to click off. And a, uh, another promotions women's world champion on the show. Oh, no. uh. cut, cut, the, cut the feed. Cut the feed. Tony oh. Khan's influencing grapple sauce. He's paying us. <laughs> My new favorite wrestler. Oh man, uh, but yeah, I really in, in, enjoyed it. Good, good show. Great Fallout. I like how they're already building towards Forbidden Door. Good shit. That's how you, how you get the stories moving along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. 
yeah um let's see coming up i'm uh currently trying to edit a uh, reaction video to the movie the iron claw uh incredible movie uh can't wait to get that video out uh yeah it's a uh, lot more work to edit a reaction video than i thought uh <laughs> but i'm getting there i've got to uh keep in mind of the fair use laws and uh keep my clips down and not violate and get any copyright strikes so yeah mm -hmm. i'm trying to pull that off but yeah really enjoyed that um yeah for sure we should uh try to do some more reaction stuff maybe uh to matches or mm -hmm. you know keeping them short like that uh could be fun true that yeah um let me think here yeah uh also everyone out there don't forget to uh elbow drop that like button power bomb that subscribe button share and leave a comment <laughs> we'd really appreciate it yeah our next goal is 500 subscribers um yeah. remember when we were just hanging around 30 for like the longest time like Thank you, everybody. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got people commenting, uh, people subscribing. Good stuff. We got people uh, downloading our podcast Ooh. off of uh, wherever they're listening to. Uh, how, how does that work, Chad? Uh, well, I'm. Uh, we're, we're all available on the audio realm. If you prefer to ingest this content uh in your headphones or while you drive you can check us out on apple podcast spotify iHeartRadio, uh podbean and anywhere else that uh all major audio podcasts are found so please check us out we'd uh love to see some more traffic there and uh, i know a long podcast that's how i do most of my commutes mm -hmm. yeah 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 fun stuff um yeah, I'm trying to think here. Uh, anything coming up down the pipe? Um, yeah, I guess we'll have our collision review probably dropping uh, possibly Tuesday. Um, yeah, yeah, fun stuff. Uh, we did do our pay-per-view review one day late because that was uh, quite the pain for you two to watch that till the wee hours of the morning and uh, wake up at 8 a.m. like we do on Mondays. That would have sucked. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it'll be good to get back in that swing of just watching a two-hour show that you can fast-forward through commercials and make it like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, good stuff. Uh, yeah, do you two have anything else you want to add? Uh, tell our viewers. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Uh, make sure to check out our short form content. We're pumping out mm. top fives like it's nobody's business. Uh, and uh, thank you, Dave, for hosting this. Yeah. Great yeah, job as yeah. always. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, this is uh, the highlight of my life. <laughs> I love professional wrestling. Like, nothing nothing gives me that, that joy, that hit of... Yeah. of fun you know <laughs> uh but yeah fun stuff and uh yeah i think that just about does it uh yeah thank you chad thank you chandler really enjoy having you on the show thank you dave and, yeah yeah and uh yeah i think that just about does it everyone out there have a good one and bye bye peace bye bye